Hello, Western Heights Church family. It's Wednesday, and so here's your Wednesday minister moment. You may remember a couple of weeks ago that uh, when I did my minister moment, we talked about Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah had had a very traumatic experience. Someone was trying to kill him. And so he ran for his life and experienced this immense depression and loneliness as he went out into the wilderness by himself. Now, what we talked about that day was the fact that Elijah began at some point to walk toward Mount Horeb, the the mountain of God is what it's called. And it was as though he was searching for God. He was walking toward God in the middle of his depression. And so when we deal with things like that, we also need to continue to search for God as well. But I want to get back into the story a little bit to talk about some other things that happened in that might help us when we feel depressed or we feel lonely. As he walked toward Mount Horeb, God took care of him. God fed him. He allowed him to rest. He was very patient with him through all this. And what God was showing Elijah through those actions was that he loved him, that Elijah was important to him, that he cared about him. And so we need to remember that God loves us just as he loved Elijah in the middle of his depression. But once Elijah got to the mountain, God had him go up on top of the mountain. And he asked him a question. He said, Elijah, why are you here? And here's what Elijah says. He says, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. They've broken down your altars. They put your prophets to death uh, with the sword. And I'm the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. So Elijah felt like, it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't work. It doesn't help. I'm the only one left. And now they want to kill me. Why do I even want to keep going? God told Elijah to stay there while God was going to pass by. And then suddenly what happens is there is this great wind, a wind so strong that it rolls these rocks and boulders down the mountain and then they crash into each other and, and they break apart because of the strength of the wind. And then there is this earthquake that shakes the mountain in a mighty way. Finally, there is this fire that starts on the mountain that God brings this fire down. And so through these things, Elijah sees the power of God but he doesn't hear anything from God. He sees his power, but he doesn't hear anything. And then there's finally, there's a a gentle breeze. And in that gentle breeze, God speaks again. And he asks Elijah the same question. Why are you here? Elijah's response is exactly the same. I've been very zealous for the Lord. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. They've broken down the altars. They put the prophets to death with a sword. And I'm the only one left. And now they want to kill me too. And as God listens to Elijah again, Elijah again, he, he doesn't respond to Elijah in the way that Elijah or that we might expect. He hears it. He doesn't condemn what he says. He doesn't say it's wrong. He he doesn't say any of those things. What he does is he says, Elijah, I've got something I want you to do. He tells Elijah to go down the mountain to find two men who are going to become kings in two kingdoms. And he says, anoint them as kings and they will take care of your enemies. And then he tells Elijah to find another man named Elisha, who will be a prophet. And Elijah is going to mentor him as a prophet, to take Elijah's place eventually. So what God does is he says, he's already told Elijah that he loves him. He showed him that that he loves him. But then he says, Elijah, I've got something I want you to do. There's still a purpose for you. It's going to be okay. Go down and anoint these men as kings. They will take care of the issues that you're having to deal with. Choose Elisha to be a prophet as well, and mentor him. He gives him somebody to connect with, to help him to to know that he's not alone. But in addition to that, God tells him there are still 7,000 people in Israel who have not bowed down to Baal, who have not given up their faith in me. 
So God tells Elisha, you're not alone. You're not the only one. Sometimes we feel like we're the only one. We're the only one that feels depressed. We're the only one that feels lonely. Nobody knows, nobody cares, but God cares. And there are others who care as well. And God wants you to know that when you feel that way, you're not alone. Because there are a lot of people, a lot of faithful people who've gone through depression, who have felt very lonely in their life. But it's not about the fact that you deal with depression or loneliness. Do we still have faith? As humans, we deal with those things. It doesn't determine whether you have faith or not. My encouragement to you is to remember how much God loves you and wants to hear you. Continue searching for him. But also remember that God has a purpose for you, just like he had for Elijah. One of those purposes is that we are to imitate Jesus. We've got to get to know him and, and try to follow his example. And as we do that, we are lights for other people, which means we can mentor others. We can be good examples for them, help them to see God more clearly. And we need to remember that we're not alone, that God is with us, but there are others in the church family who suffer with some of the th same things. And we, that means we understand each other. So call on somebody when you're struggling. Let them know. Talk to someone. And let's pray for each other and build each other up and fulfill the purpose that we have to look out for each other. I hope this is, this is an encouragement to you. I hope that you have a great day and a blessed week.